ईश्वराय शंभ शंभ
जननम सुकधम मरणम करुणम मिलनम मधुरम स्मरणम करुणम कालवश्यादिह सकलम करुणम समयादिपत अखिलम करुणम नमस्कारम जय रुमा <clears throat> the the nature of life is such in the same package that we think is me life and death packed in the same package not separately same package love and hate people can hold in the same heart at the same time they can love one person and hate another person turmoil and tranquility also held in the same package like this whatever you thought or what you normally think as opposites of life all packed in the same package it's only a question of what you choose to pick if you pick love you're one way if you pick hate you're another way if you pick joy one way if you pick misery another way oh sadguru why couldn't they pack pack it in a separate packet No no it's your choice the creation is so compassionate if you want to suffer you have freedom to suffer <laughs> yes and a whole lot of people choose to cause pain and suffering to themselves and of course they will share it with people around them It's just a question of choice because everything is packed in the same package. If it was, you know, people have this right brain, left brain, right side, Ida, Pingala, everything. Suppose it was like that, right side was all joy, left side was misery, right side was life, left side was death, uh, that would be easy. But that's not how it is. it's all packed together if you're conscious you will choose what you want if you're unconscious randomly you picking up what whatever you pick up and when you cannot explain why you're miserable why a calamity has struck you why things are going wrong no you're searching for god because you did not find god up there you settle for stars and planets i want you to understand next to god people's choices planets and stars they decide god decides but it's too vague at least they're little tangible they're spinning the wrong way for you your saturn is spinning the wrong way your brains are spinning spinning the wrong way for sure well do other things have influences on us of course they have but uh, will you let them influence you or not that is also your choice becoming vulnerable and becoming strong both are in the same package right now with the virus 
it's up to you. I didn't do anything, how did I get it? Ah, that is the whole thing, you did not do anything, you did not wash your hands, you did not sanitize yourself, you did not take care, ah, you got it. Well, <laughs> this happened. This in Tennessee, why I keep talking about Tennessee again and again is because uh, Isha Yoga Center or Isha Institute of Inner Sciences is located in Tennessee. Here also it's Tamil Nadu TN and there also Tennessee TN. <laughs> Things are made a little easy for me like that. The postcode, the highway, everything, numbers also matching a little bit. Easy for me to remember. <laughs> if I remember one, the other one is just a reflection. So this happened in Tennessee. Uh, a man who was standing for a minor office in the city was going door to door campaigning. So he knocked on a door, a lady opened the door for him and he said what all he intends to do for the town and she should elect him. She smiled at him and said, you are my second choice. Oh really? Who is your first choice? She said, well, just anybody. <laughs> you need to pick, what is your first choice? <laughs> So, uh, right now, life situations are confronting us in a certain way, probably like never before for this generation. United States crossing fifteen thousand fatalities, Spain crossing fifteen thousand, Italy nearing eighteen thousand, France crossing eleven thousand. UK crossed seven thousand, India nearing two hundred. Well, it's an exceptional job by the authorities in India. The doctors, the forces and the government decision makers, for as dense a population as we are, this is a phenomenal work. But still, in the next week to ten days, it could ramp up. Uh, simply by permutation, it will ramp up naturally. But still compared to how it's happening in some of the nations, we are way better that way because we acted little preemptive action. But <laughs> About five hundred people who are infected because of a certain religious group, they've gone missing. They're searching for them, they're just not traceable. These five hundred people by themselves can infect probably hundred thousand people in the next month or two, all by themselves. And those people that are infected, how many more they will infect, the permutations will happen. So unfortunately, there are situations like that. I hope they lie, lie low, they won't go here and there infecting too many people. So this is where we are. At a time like this, what you pick, what is your choice is very important. It's always important, but most people do not understand the significance of significance of their choices unless uh, there are some stringent or very acute consequences. So this is a time where the choices we make, how we behave is going to have acute consequences. While young people who are little strutting around saying that uh, they won't die, only old people die, but uh, it's getting them also now.
a few young people have died. Maybe it is because of other conditions that they had, or maybe the virus is learning to work on them also, or maybe there was not medical care, we don't know, but it's beginning to happen. But those people who got sick, some of them that we know, it's more than a month since they were infected. After ten, twelve days, they came out of it. But after over a month, now almost thirty-five, thirty-seven days, they're still not able to breathe properly, young people. Their breath is very short, even if they walk one hundred, hundred and fifty feet, they will have to stop and rest. They are in that condition, though they are young and healthy and fever is gone, everything is gone, but their breathing capabilities have not come back, at least for the people that I know. I don't know, for all the other people who have recovered in the world, the situation is same, we do not know. They may be out of danger, but still there's a lot of work to be done in terms of health. Uh, there are complaints that I am not answering enough questions because so many questions have been sent from various quarters and I have not answered. So today we'll focus on answering some questions, please. This question is from Shekhar Reddy. Sadhguru, it seems like it is a time for prophecies. <laughs> While many are referring to the foretelling of Putluri Veer Brahmam, a saint and seer from Andhra who wrote about Corona in his Kalanyanam, others are referring to French apothecary, astrologer and seer, Michel de Nostradamus. What is your comment on such predictions? Wonderful, these predictions are wonderful, but they always happen after the event has occurred. <laughs> so, all these people who are reading all these prophecies, why couldn't they prevent it if they knew beforehand? If you know beforehand and if you do not prevent a pandemic, that's called a crime of the worst kind. So, uh, it is a human fad that they want to have a scope into the future. Isn't it wonderful? You don't know what will happen next. Otherwise, could you live? <laughs> so, uh, there are a whole lot of people, astrologers are attacking me all over the place. Because <laughs> I'm not good for their business. <laughs> so, a human being is the peak of evolution on this planet. From the lowest level of creatures to as you come, you will see they become less and less available to the influences around them. Let us say there is an earthworm. If something changes here, he will die. He's not going to take a swim and go to Africa and live there. Or he is not even going to go ten miles away and live there. He will die because that's how much capability he has. If this terrain or if his habitat goes bad, there is nothing he can do. This is why we've been talking about rejuvenating the soil because these microbes and worms which are vital for our survival, they will not migrate somewhere else. They do not have the capability of a corona. Corona doesn't have the capability, it is just that you are providing free transport. Human beings, the most mobile creatures on the planet, are providing transport. Our mobility, if we do not make it little more conscious, nature will control it. See, right now it's happened, we can't move. This happened. This was in Los Angeles. A hotshot uh, corporate CEO had a pretty secretary 
This is in early twentieth century. Since then much has changed. So uh, he said, I'm going for a weekend in Palm Springs, why don't you come with me? She said, I know I'm your typewriter, but I'm not portable. Your portability needs to become little more conscious. It is human mobility which has empowered the virus the way it has. If this had happened thousand years ago, if where there was no air travel, no much sea travel, all this, then it would have been just there, wherever it happened. Wuhan or wherever it happened, it would have been just around there, maybe adjacent villages, something, and it would have died out. But because human beings have become so mobile, today they're in China, tomorrow morning they're in Italy, next day morning they're in uh, United States or wherever. Because of this seamless mobility, suddenly corona has taken on a huge form. By itself, it would not have because it needs you. So, this... this uh, urge to always predict something, there was a man, he is no more, there was a man like this in Tamil Nadu. He predicted, Five hundred years later, there will be a big flood in Tamil Nadu. I said, that's wonderful. People came and asked me, Sadhguru, what do you think? Five hundred years later, there's going to be a major flood. I said, that is why I'm sitting at the foothills. In case the flood comes, we will go up the mountain. You are in Chennai, you will go. He said, is that so? I said, yes. But I can also make some predictions. Seven hundred years later, this hill is going to become a volcano and blow. I said, what, really? I said, see, seven hundred years later, I will not be there, you will not be there. We can predict whatever we want. <laughs> Please tell me what is going to happen in the next five days. Hmm? Not even five months, next five days, tell me what's going to happen. This could be useful like a meteorological report. If you tell me what's going to happen in the next five days, it would be of some use. Five hundred years later, anything can happen. And of course, people have such a fad about these things, they will adjust the time and the prediction. Just about everything that can ever happen on this planet has already been said by Nostradamus. I'm not a French, you know, I'm not conversant with French, but I like the word damas <laughs> in English language. I don't know what it means in French. So, <laughs> this will go on and on, people making predictions always of the past. Well, if you look at certain projection of how populations are growing, how things are happening, what kind of ecological damage is happening, you can make some calculation and predict something. That in this trajectory if you go, this is what you will hit, we can say that. But five hundred years of trajectory is a different matter, because we do not know what all forces will influence things. People say, you know, after the world war is over, they say, we, we knew this is going to happen, you know, somewhere it is written. After the nuclear bombs, atomic bombs were dropped, people say, we knew about this, two ugly spots will happen in the world. What about the test explosions? You missed all of them, you don't know how many hundreds of tests have been done. Maybe human beings did not die, I'm sure. A whole lot of creatures have died. 
So this is a wasteful thing, instead of doing what you have to do now, actively, you go on talking about how we already knew. <clears throat> there are two problems right now with coronavirus. Like somebody said, it is dense population and dense population. We are already a dense population, don't also be dense up here. Let's do what best we can do, don't predict how many people will die. It's just stupid. How many people we will not let them die, this is important. Next question is from Karthik. Namaskaram Sadhguru. Generally it is said that once you are on spiritual sadhana, you should not get involved in action. But you are making volunteers go out and serve, distribute materials to health professionals, raising funds for rural people's ration. Is all this worldly activity needed on spiritual path? No, no, it's not needed. It's definitely not needed. But morning, evening, is this very worldly? Hello? Is it very worldly or no? <laughs> if you stop all that, then I will not ask you to volunteer, I will not ask you to serve, I will not ask you to do anything. If you simply sit like this, no food, no movement, no toilet, if you simply sit, I will also come and fall at your feet. You don't have to do anything, we will worship you every day. Yes, we will. I'm not joking. We definitely will, but you are very worldly. But when others eat, suddenly it is worldly. This is spiritual, you eating is spiritual, somebody eating is worldly <laughs> So, my meal is very spiritual meal. Your meal is worldly meal. No, 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 we must decide. If you are oblivious to your own suffering, then you have a right to be oblivious to everybody's suffering. Absolutely nothing matters to you. But when this matters, everything matters. So, the reason why there is a certain amount of negativity against spiritual movements is because of this because largely they have been perceived as irresponsible people. People who live on the society, it's very, very important. If society gives you ten rupees, you must do hundred rupees of work. Yes, only then you have a right to close your eyes and simply sit like this, otherwise you have no right. So when situations happen, like this, right now. Okay, this is a pandemic, but uh, I hope this question is not from within the yoga center. <laughs> Karthik <laughs> So suppose uh, we are here in the yoga center, two hundred, I mean two thousand six hundred and forty-two people right now not a single infection. But uh, they're all happy, peaceful, very wonderful. But I have offered the premises to the state government. Now they're examining how much space can we give them. So the space that we give them, they will bring infected people. You need to understand infection is not going to just fly and get you. Infection will be there with them, we have to provide a protective atmosphere and some of them will be idiots, we have to lock them in if necessary. All kinds of people are there. They will get paranoid, they want to run out or they will fall in love with you, they want to hug you. <laughs> yes, all these things have happened. All this we have to manage ensuring Nobody here is infected. 
is very important because your compassion is not about causing more problem. If you get infected, you're just multiplying the problem. So compassion is not a stupid thing. Compassion is a very intelligent process of life. When you're all inclusive, you will see what is the best thing to do. The best thing to do is not something that can be decided today just like this. This is the best thing to do. This is an evolving situation as life always is. In the given situation, what is the most sensible thing to do, we will decide accordingly. We are already clearing some premises and making it ready in case it just bursts out. Because Coimbatore City also has a few people who got infected in Delhi and they came here. I think a few of them are not traceable. We don't know where they are, how many people they're going to infect. It's come very close, just twenty-five kilometers away. I think Kovai Pudur is segregated, is it, today? Uh, they've started, uh, you know, doing localized segregation. Wherever there is one or two infections, they're just segregating that little, little societies so that it doesn't spread. That's exactly what we will also do if people come from outside. But we don't... we want to ensure, we want to keep this record by the time this virus is over, however long it takes, we don't want to see even one person here infected. So uh, our Chinese volunteers, thanks to them, have uh, sent material for us. Just today morning it has arrived, the gloves, the protective gear and various other things. So you will have protective gear to go on self. It's just that you have to maintain certain distance and certain sense. There was an artist, one day he got a... a female model to paint. So she sat there and he started painting. After some time, he went and kissed her. She said, what? I'm sure you're doing this with every model who comes your way. He said, no, you're the first one. Then she asked, how many models have you had? He said, four. First one was a rose, second was an onion, third was a banana. You are the first female. So, uh, what you touch, what you don't touch, what kind of distance you keep, you just have to take care of this because this is serious business. This is life and death business. Your enemy is invisible, don't know where it is. You don't know who is carrying it. There is no guarantee. If someone is young and sturdy, they may be carrying it, not showing a single sign. So, you just have to treat everybody like an onion. So, about to serve or not to serve, this is not even a question. This is not service, this is just basic expression of your humanity. If you think forsaking your humanity is your spirituality, I'm sorry, I don't want such spirituality. But if you become like this, nothing about you is material. You simply... then we will not ask you to serve. You don't have to. As long as this is there, you must serve. Because for this to happen, behind this there are so many people. There are people out there still working in the field. The poor farmer may get it, the shopkeeper may get it, the one who brings it here may get it. Our volunteers who are going out to procure, they may get it. So, when all of them are sticking out their life for you to eat, 
you not willing to do even a little bit, doesn't uh, sound like spirituality to me. This question is from Mimi. Namaskaram Sadhguru. In the last few weeks you have been speaking about making home a sweet home to live in. However, home cannot be sweet for many who are victims of domestic violence and cannot escape anywhere. This is a man complaining or a woman? Mimi. Huh? Mimi, M-I-M-I, -M -I, okay. looks like a woman. Sounds like a woman. <laughs> In Lebanon, the number of victims have increased by hundred percent since March 2019 and the same is happening across the world after the lockdown. How can we help them in these difficult days and what can they do to survive this period? Domestic violence, I thought uh, it could be a man because these days women are more fit than men. So I thought it's the man complaining, but it's still a woman unfortunately. Well. So this is what we are trying to change, this is what the world is trying to change. Because... because a woman or a female human being has certain biological responsibilities in terms of bringing us all forth here, because of that, there were certain social handicaps which evolved over a period of time. These handicaps have been exploited too harshly in many societies, almost everywhere. But not everybody, but everywhere it's happened. In some places it has religious backing, in some places it's free enterprise. To dominate and exploit a woman, individual people will always do. I want you to understand it's not just about a woman. Individual people have a tendency to exploit anybody who is little weaker than them. Well. People all over the world, this used to happen, fortunately it's come down considerably now. When we were growing up also, uh, every day at the school you can get beaten for something or the other almost every day. Why are you beating a child? Simply because they're smaller than you. You and you and had sayings, uh, spare the stick and spoil the child, something, something. So you are not beating them because you know something better. You are not beating them because you have evolved and they are unevolved and you're going to hasten evolution with a stick. Simply they are smaller than you. How come when they grow up you don't beat them? Because now you know the consequence. So similarly, they are not necessarily beating somebody because they are women. They're beating them because they're physically weaker compared to a man, little smaller and weaker, generally at least. So this exploitation of anybody who is weaker than you, either physically, financially, socially, whichever way, if you're weak, if you're a little weaker, you get rubbed around. You know, <clears throat> once I was uh, there was some kind of assembly near in Malanadu, that is near Shivamogga, in the Western Ghats. There's some camp there. And uh, this is way back I'm talking. 
some little yoga thing going on and uh, they wanted me to come there and spend a day with them. So I went. Naturally, my mode of transport was always a motorcycle at that time, I went there. <laughs> Those days, the 250cc single-stroke machine was a big motorcycle. Today, when I park it next to what I have today, it looks like a joke, but <laughs> that day it was a big motorcycle. On the road, it was the fastest thing on the road. So I went there and uh, some other people were there who were serving that place. So on a little Luna, there used to be one little machine called Luna, kinetic thing. So on this Luna, this guy goes to purchase some vegetables from a faraway place and comes because this is in a remote jungle. And then uh, he was coming with all these bags and some truck was going and uh, truck pushed him off the road. So he fell down and uh, little damage, no big damage but some damage, some skin lost, no bones. So he came and uh, he was saying what happened and you know, because I didn't have power, he pushed me like this. On the road, you must always have some power. I said, not just road, just about anywhere. If you don't have power, they'll push you around <laughs> Unfortunately, the world has become like this. This is why, this is why a spiritual space is very important where People are not seen for their strength. People are not seen for their physical strength or financial strength or something else like that. But people are valued just for what they are. We need to build a society like this. This violence within the house, I know a whole lot of people are trying to address it like it's a man-woman problem. It's not a man-woman problem, this is Man versus anything problem. Anything that's weaker than you, if it's very small, you will stamp it out. If it's little big, you throw stones at it. If it's little bigger, you take a stick and beat it. Just about anything. Why... <laughs> why do people... why did people go about just shooting whatever they saw? Wild animals and stuff like that. Not always for food. If they had just shot for food because of their survival, that's a different matter. Most of the animals were shot simply for pleasure because they can't shoot back at you. So, you shoot a buffalo because it can't shoot back at you, you beat a child because he can't beat you back, you beat a woman because she can't beat you back. So, this is on everywhere. But today women have choices, it's time, we must make those choices. We can't fix everything right away, but all of you who have children, empowering the girl child in your house is the most important thing. Empowerment does not mean she should become the exploiter from tomorrow. Empowerment is this, that you have no need to exploit anybody. That is empowerment. A human being is truly empowered that if I sit here, I feel wonderful by myself. I don't have to have ten people behind, beneath me for me to feel great. This is empowerment. This empowerment has to happen means you have to look at the spiritual process, the whole world. Spiritual process, does not mean looking up, looking down, it's about turning inward and getting in touch with the essential nature of who we are. If we don't touch that, we will be like every other animal. This happened one day. A lion was walking in the forest and he was feeling like this man in the domestic violence scene. Little strutting around, thinking like that. He saw a fox, he caught him and he said, hey, who is the king of the forest? Fox, you know how? Oh my lord, you are not only king of the forest, you are the king of the universe. 
he felt little more, it got puffed up. And then he was strutting around. Then he saw a leopard, caught him. Who is the king of the forest? He shivered because he is not a match for the lion. He said, no, no, you are definitely the king of the forest, there is no two ways about it. If I had two choices, it would be you and you. Then he was feeling really wonderful, even a leopard is shivering in front of him. And he came to a little opening, there he saw a huge tusker standing. And he roared, who is the king of the forest? The tusker, without a word, put his trunk out, picked him up, twirled him around and thrashed him on the ground. With his back hurting very badly, you could have just told me. <laughs> the tusker said, but I had to make my point. <laughs> so this problem that wherever you find somebody who is little weaker than you, physically, financially, socially, politically, you want to rub them in. This is very animalistic. It's okay for the animal kingdom, not okay for human beings. Yoga, yoga, yogeshwaraya Bhuta Bhuta Bhuteshwaraya Kala Kala Kaleshwaraya Shiva Shiva Sarveshwaraya Shambha Shambha Maha